So what is BIDS? For over 40 years, So what is BIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or BIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service True Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERPI has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan yung batas at polisiya para mas makita nila yung epekto at resulta nito. <sighs> Pag nanuli tayo, wala tayo may sasagot. Kaya dapat pag-aralan din natin. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan ng mga batas at polisiya para malaman nila kung epektibo ba ito sa karamihan o magiging problema lang. Kung walang basehan ng isang batas, basta na lamang ipatutupad at walang pulso na kinukuha sa mga mamamayan, 
eh, mahirap. Mahalagang isailalim sa masusing pagsusuri ang mga polisiya at programa ng pamahalaan bago pa man ito ipatupad. Dapat ring ipagpatuloy ang pagsubaybay o pagmonitor sa mga ito habang ipinapatupad hanggang sa matapos ang kanilang implementasyon. Dito pumapasok ang tungkuli na ginagampanan ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Ang PIDS, ang siyang sangay ng pamahalaan na naatasang gumawa ng pag-aaral at pananaliksik at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas at iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno tungkol sa mga programa at polisiya sa pamahalaan upang masigurong matugunan nito ang socio-economic needs ng ating bansa. Pag pinag-aralan, mas effective! So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Service through policy research. In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERPI has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries.
Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan yung batas at polisiya para mas makita nila yung epekto at resulta nito. <sighs> Pag nanguli tayo, wala tayo may sasagot. Kaya dapat pag-aralan din natin. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan ng mga batas at polisiya para malaman nila kung epektibo ba ito sa karamihan o magiging problema lang. Kung walang basihan ng isang batas, basta na lamang ipatutupad at walang pulso na kinukuha sa mga mamamayan, eh, mahirap. Mahalagang isa ilalim sa masusing pagsusuri ang mga polisiya at programa ng pamahalaan bago pa man ito ipatupad. Dapat rin ipagpatuloy ang pagsubaybay o pagmonitor sa mga ito habang ipinapatupad hanggang sa matapos ang kanilang implementasyon. Dito pumapasok ang tungkuli na ginagampanan ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Ang PIDS ang siyang sangay ng pamahalaan na naatasang gumawa ng pag-aaral at pananaliksik at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas at iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno tungkol sa mga programa at pulisiya sa pamahalaan upang masigurong matugunan nito ang socio-economic needs ng ating bansa. Pag pinag-aralan, mas effective! Welcome to the PIDS webinar series. Before we start the webinar, we would like to give you a few reminders. For attendees, your microphone is muted upon entry. In case you have a question, the moderator will read it during the open forum. For those attending via Cisco WebEx, use the chat box located at the lower part of the screen. Click the chat icon, type your name and affiliation, and your question, and send to all panelists. You may send your questions while the presentation is in progress. The moderator will read them during the open forum. For Facebook viewers, at least two questions from the comment section will be read by the moderator during the open forum. We will moderate all questions to ensure that they are relevant to the scope of the presentation. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to your active participation. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the PIDS webinar series. We trust that all of you are safe and in good health. I'm Sheila CR, and I will be your moderator. Friends, uh, we will tackle another crucial topic this afternoon, which is about education, particularly the senior high school program. We will discuss uh, two PIDS studies that look into the readiness of our senior high school students to join the labor market and the willingness of employers to take them. To formally open our event, I now give the floor to the Vice President of PIDS, Dr. Marife Ballesteros. Peng, the floor is now yours. Yeah, thank you, Sheila. Uh, first, let me acknowledge the key officials among our participants. From the government, we have Undersecretary Jesus Lorenzo Mateo of the Department of Education. 
Assistant Secretary Dominic Tutai of the Department of Labor and, and Employment, Director Dominador Gamboa of the House of Representatives Congressional Policy and Budget Research Department. From NEDA, we have OIC Director Joseph Lalog. From the private sector, we have President Cesar Virata of the Rizal College Commercial Banking Corporation. We have several officials from, our, from the academe, academician and Professor William Padolina, President Laura Del Rosario of Miriam College, Philippine Science High School Executive Director Lilia Habacon, Philippine Science High School Central Luzon Director Teresa Ann Diaz, Mindanao State University Senior High School Director Junaina Di Malna, University of uh, Ottawa Executive Director Ernesto Cordero, Polytechnic University of the Philippines Director Marcela Figura, Northern Iloilo Polytechnic State College, Associate Director Eva Montero, University of Asia and Pacific, Dean Maria Magsino. Also from UAP, we have Program Director Margo Valdez, Urdaneta City University uh, Institute of Graduate and Advanced Studies, Dean Virgilio Manzano, Southern Luzon State University, Dean Marietta Villafuerde, Villafuerde, sorry for that. Malay College, uh, Malay Colleges, Dean Jimmy Maming, University of Bohol, Dean Amon Tirol, Central Luzon State University, Dean Matilde Recto, Mapua Senior High School Principal Lilia Sabino, Malayan Colleges, Mindanao Senior High School Principal Cesar Glenn, Oh, Osho, Manila Paitana College's Senior High School Principal Ophelia Mutas, Luna National Vocational High School Principal Perpetua Eslava, Nanyang Polytechnic Retired, uh, in, Retired Regional Director Alexander Madrigal, and from our uh, CSOs, NGOs, CIMO, uh, Director, uh, Secretary Director Ethel Valenzuela, Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry Professor Emer Emeritus uh, George Barcelon, uh, Director Daniel Agustin of Masagana Sakahan, Executive Director Ronnie Tapnio of ICCP Group Foundation, Executive Director Jerome Marquez of Arnold Jansen Catholic Foundation, Bayan Academy Director Carlos Sagun, uh, some Deputy Director Regional Director Albert Lee of Samahan ng Kabataang Voluntario ng Pilipinas. And last but not the least, uh, we have Board of Trustees Sherwin Pelayo of the Analytics Association of uh, the Philippines. And uh, to our guest uh, uh, from, uh, sorry, from, to our guest from uh, Colleagues from the government, academe, civil society, friends from media, private sector, as well as those who are watching through the PIDS Facebook page. Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar. This afternoon's webinar will feature two related PIDS studies on senior high school and the labor market. The first study will present the perspectives of grade 12 students and human resource officers on their experience with a K-12 program. The second study will assess the employability of senior high school graduates using the labor force survey. It has been about seven years from now since the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013 was signed into law. This law, as many of you are aware, paved the way for the institutionalization of the K-12 basic education program. So from the 10-year basic education curriculum, the Philippines transitioned to a 12-year basic education program that covers six years of primary education, four years of junior high school, and two years of senior high school. The rationale for the laws is, is to address the poor quality of basic education provided by the old curriculum, 
as, as reflected in the low achieved achievement scores of Filipino students, especially in international assessments. It was also enacted to address the country's rising unemployment rate. Under the K-12 program, graduates are now qualified to of senior high school are now qualified to work in industries once they are certified. They are also given the option to pursue a baccalaureate degree in college. In 2022, the first batch of K-12 uh, students have graduated. It is therefore timely to know whether our senior high school graduates are work ready. Are there job opportunities for them? Is the labor market ready to employ them? So we hope to find some answers to these questions in this afternoon's presentation by PIDS Senior Research Fellow, Dr. Aniceto Orbeta. He will share with us the findings of the studies and provide policy recommendations to enhance the senior high school program. And to provide additional insights to the studies, we have invited discussions from the government and the private sector. We are honored to have with us today, Director Jocelyn Andaya of the Department of Education, Bureau of Curriculum Development, and Executive Director uh, Lovelaine Basiliote of the Philippine Business for Education. Thank you. Let me take this opportunity to thank uh, Edi Basiliote and Director Andaya for taking time to join us in this event. We do appreciate your support to PIDS research activities. And we look forward to hearing your insights and comments on the findings and recommendations of both studies. So once again, thank you to everyone for being with us today. I would like to encourage all of you to stay until the end and actively participate in the open forum. Magandang uh, tanghali. I now turn you over to our moderator. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ballesteros. So friends, we now proceed to uh, the presentation of um, um, our presenter, of our speaker, and flash on the screen are the authors. So the presentation was called from um, two um, uh, PIDS studies that uh, explored or the exa that examined the um, senior high school program. The first um, paper was um, authored by Dr. Orbet, Dr. Aniceto Orbeta, Ms. Marites Lagarto, Ms. Maria Cristina Ortiz, Ms. Danica Aisa Ortiz, and Ms. Marupsil Potestad. And then there is the second paper, which uh, the first paper was uh, done in 2018. The second paper was done in 2020, and it was um, authored again by um, uh, Dr. Orbeta uh, with the assistance of Ms. Mar uh, Marupsil Potestad. Okay. So this afternoon, we will be um, listening to uh, the um, highlights of uh, both studies and to present this, uh, the study is, is our resident education and labor policy research expert at PIDS, Dr. Aniceto Orbeta. Um, Dr. Orbeta is a senior research fellow at PIDS and his, his fields of expertise include demographic economics, Impact Evaluation, Applied Economic Modeling, and Information and Communications Technology. He has a PhD in Economics from the UP School of Economics and a postdoctoral degree from Harvard University. I now turn you over to Dr. Aniceto Arbeta. Sir, the floor is now yours. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. As uh, mentioned, I will be uh, presenting two studies. Uh, 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 one done in 2018, uh, just before the first batch of senior high school graduates left uh, school, uh, which was about April 2018. And uh, that one will uh, be asking about what uh, that time, what were their uh, perspective in terms of getting employment, what was their experience in senior high school, and, and things uh, like those. And at the same time, we also ask the, the uh, human resource officers of uh, 
firms, what did you think about uh, the senior high school graduates in terms of their employability? And uh, uh, just last year, uh, after about uh, the data that was available to us is eight quarters after the first batch graduated, we look at the data and what, how, and then examine the, how this, uh, uh, the senior high school graduates are faring in the labor market. So that's the background of the two studies. And I'll be presenting this uh, one after the other. Okay, next slide, please. So this is the first study. And I'd just like to say that whatever I say in this particular study was one uh, gathered in around uh, 2018 were the, uh, uh, for school years 2017-2018. Okay, so next slide, please. So just to remind ourselves about uh, the uh, the enabling law of uh, the of uh, the key to twelve reform or, or R eighteen ten fifty three. It is uh, besides uh, introducing the senior high school program, there are a lot of profound changes uh, contained in the law, uh, including uh, 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 compulsory uh, univer uh, or universal kindergarten. Uh, as well as the introduction of the mother tongue-based uh, multilingual education, so that's that's those are the, that's that's how uh, uh, revolutionary that law is in terms of basic education. It, it contains a lot of the reforms, uh, including the senior high school. Next slide, please. So since we we are looking at the uh, uh, we are, we were talking to to uh, senior high school are about to graduate, we ask about the uh, the curriculum and the competencies that are supposed to be the uh, that are supposed to be formed during that time and 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 the types of jobs that the senior high school are expecting after a graduation as well as what are the private sector's uh, perspective in terms of the available jobs for senior high school graduates as well and look at some of the uh, issues uh, by matching the two perspectives uh, in the study. Next slide, please. So the research design and methodology includes uh, uh, get uh, focus group discussion to get the perspective of senior high school graduating students. We did 27 uh, focus group discussions uh, in 18 schools, 12 of which are public and six are private. And uh, besides their perceptions on what uh, work they expect, the question also included their school experience, particularly work immersions. To get the views of private schools, we did uh, key informant interviews with uh, human resource officers of 26 private firms in NCR, Calabar Zone, uh, Region 4A, and, and, and Cebu. Uh, the questions for the firms include uh, work immersion experience for those who have hosted uh, senior high school uh, graduating students, as well as their perception about the employability of, of senior high school graduates. Then we did uh, secondary data analysis of, of uh, data from the De Department of Education on grade 12 students. And finally, we did a review of the uh, guidelines into implementation, particularly of uh, work immersion. And uh, finally, we, uh, we also look at the the hiring uh, guidelines of the uh, Civil Service Commission, uh, or because that 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 we found out that there are some issues there in terms of when we when we interviewed local government units, they find some restrictions because of the existing uh, hiring guidelines of the Civil Service Commissions. Next slide, please. So this is the, uh, just to remind ourselves and, and, and put us on the same page, uh, this is the uh, structure of the basic education system. So you have kinder grade to grade six for elementary and for junior high school, besides the core courses, there is a uh, exploratory TLE uh, for grade seven and eight and specialized TRA, TLE uh, for uh, grades nine to 10. But for senior high school, you see the tracking there already uh this includes eight core uh, learning areas uh, and uh, the four tracks of academic uh, technical vocational and livelihood as well as uh, sports and arts and design so that's that's how 
Yeah. And this one ends with a work immersion uh, call, uh, for uh, some culminating activity, however it is de that defined, and or our research uh, uh, that the students will complete uh, at the end of their senior high school. Uh, next slide, please. So the, uh, this is the structure of the enrollment and then you, you, you see in, during that time and that, that the school year six, 27 to 18, we have about 2.7 million students then, 1.2 million of which are grade 12 students and 50, 52% are uh, in public or deped schools. And, and, and uh, there are uh, 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 11,000 schools. Uh, uh, and and about uh, 58 percent of which are are deped schools as well. So that's that's the structure of the enrollment during that time. Next slide, please. Another thing that I'd like to ha to highlight is that uh, during that time, the the most popular uh, strand that's being offered is uh, gas, uh, the general academic. And uh, and followed by TVL. Uh, by uh, that time, we didn't have a breakdown of the TVL, so we just lump as one. Uh, so that's that's the two most popular uh, uh, strands in, in 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 senior high school. Then, okay. So that's the one of the uh, uh, features of the of the enrollment of the of, of senior high school at that time. Next slide, please. So this is the uh, outcome towards the end. So you have a, a very high uh, 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 graduation rates of 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 the like ninety six percent of of the of the uh, senior high schools grad, uh, completed the programs. But one of the other things in this slide that I'd like to highlight is this: that uh, uh, then. Uh, Already about 75% of the senior high school graduating students says that uh, uh, they will continue to college. So that's about uh, for, and it doesn't matter what, uh, whether you're academic, uh, that's 75% and or even for TVL, it's 76%. So that's about three quarters of them plans to, to, uh, to continue on, uh, continue with their studies. So that's, that's, that's basically uh, what we got from the students. Next slide, please. Uh, so here, let me try to summarize the highlights of the of the experience of the students. So uh, the slide tells us that uh, convenience or proximity and continuity junior high schools as, as as the major reason why they're choosing a school and and for the track uh, is uh, individual preference, advice of parents, advice of, of peers are, is the other. Uh, uh, other uh, reasons for selecting a track. Next slide, please. And uh, in terms of their house, uh, senior high school experience, students reveal that the their enjoyment in, in the on the subject is dependent on the teacher's effectiveness. So basically, uh, if the teacher is good, they enjoy the subject. If not, if not, then they don't. So basically, that's what how they assess it. And the students appear to be slowly tracking themselves. Uh, saying that the importance of a subject to them is determined by the re by its relation to the track or strand that they are enrolled in. Some even said that subjects outside their specialization uh, should not uh, should be taken up in junior high school or not at all. This is uh, I find this worrisome. Uh, if they meant that uh, those are not related to the track are the core courses, because the core courses are actually general education courses that were was moved move from college to senior high school. Uh, and this is worrisome to me because three fourths of them are pursuing the college. So they're tracking themselves into, into and they don't find uh, perhaps core courses as important. And, and uh, they even say that they should not be taught and move to junior high school. But when in fact, um, the general education program of, of the of college has been moved just to senior high school by design. So that's, 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 that's the, the other thing that uh, uh, the I, we 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 got is that the the student appreciated uh, that the senior high school has helped them firm up their decision on what uh, on going for college and which career to pursue. So that's 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 how the, I somehow that's, that's the 
the impact of the tracking to them. It, it tells them uh, whether they like uh, this kind of profession or not. And, and the challenges uh, include uh, uh, lack of materials. Remember that this is the beginning of the employment of the implementation. So lack of learning materials uh, and facilities, uh, dissatisfaction with class um, and curriculum management and teaching quality. So those, those are the, the major uh, uh, challenges that they mentioned. Next slide, please. Uh, so, in terms of prospects for enrollment, so what we what 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 caught our attention is that that the students don't uh, lack the confidence in terms of their employability is highlighted in the discussions, and uh, uh, the the somehow have this idea that the employers uh, will consider educational qualification and being a, a senior high school graduate is not a, 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 go, a very good uh, background educational background. Of course, they know that. They will. The employers will need technical skills, including soft skills and atti work attitude, as 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 uh, as uh, characteristic that are employable uh, graduates. Uh, and they expect that they will land in 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 clerical jobs or service and sales or elementary occupations. Uh, most of them, as as already mentioned, uh, 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 prefer to pursue higher education because uh, of uh, it raises employment opportunities as well as. Uh, salaries. Next slide, please. Uh, the prospect of uh, we already said that uh, the the half uh, most of them are going to college, and I think they they said that the free tuition in issues and LUCs are helping in their decisions. Although it's not a critical factor, they are even expecting that there will be a uh, more stringent requirement going to college because of the competition. Uh, there is a. a, a uh, the the strand selection that the are determined by the the but their calculations about uh, employment opportunities and uh, they expected that that the those who are off track will be will be doing bridging programs and 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 that's somehow the, their fears uh, during that time next slide please for firms uh my majority of the firms are said that they are willing to hire a senior high school graduate, but give, give some conditions. Conditions including competencies, as well as work immersion experience, and and that that they can offer only low rank positions. And the for government positions, uh, the, the it was already mentioned that the CEC regulations seems not updated to include. Uh, the, there's no clarification of what senior high school graduates mean. Is it uh, grade ten or grade twelve? And uh, uh, and uh, we. There is no differentiation between uh, graduates of senior high school and junior high school. So next slide, please. So uh, the other thing that they mentioned is that they find the practicum too short, and 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 uh, there's a confusion between completion and graduation. Basically, this is a confusion between junior high school and senior high school, and that's that's the that's the uh, perception of firms. Next slide, please. So, this table summarizes the 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 the, the recommendations. Uh, for example, in uh, firms who are reluctant to uh, 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 hire senior high senior high school graduates, uh, we thought that uh, uh, the firms wanted to have an in-depth knowledge of what senior high school programs. Uh, uh, provides so essentially it's a inform we thought that this is an information campaign that uh, we should be doing and raising awareness on what kind of competencies the senior high school uh, provide uh, uh, most per uh, first perceived senior high schools are not work ready so uh, the, the basic reason for that is that they define the 80 hour work immersion as not uh, as not uh, uh, enough uh, to uh, to get the uh, work attitude uh, to develop work at, uh, proper work attitude so the the one thing that's that the work immersion should be managed uh, well so that the students are placed in in, in relevant work immersions and uh, the other thing that uh, we find is that the the most seniors are not confident uh, so basically the firms believe that uh, uh, the students i said say believe that the firms still prefer college graduates than senior high school graduates so this is again a, a information uh, awareness uh, campaign that we have to do and uh, we should uh, uh, improve the arrangements for uh, 
taking of the national competency, competency assessment so that you can have provide some certifications of what you can do. Uh, next slide, please. This is the last set of uh, uh, so uh, this is the same tone of, of about uh, uh, employers uh, offering elementary occupations for senior high school graduates, and there's even this. We already mentioned about LGUs being restricted by is CEC regulations about uh, what high school graduate means. So that that has, so we already mentioned that, and and I think even Marina has. Uh, uh, uh has the same problem uh lgus has that, that, that problem so that that should be uh, treated so even government maybe was not prepared during that time to 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 uh welcome uh, senior high school graduates into the into employment so uh the other the finally they said that we would that we have to really appreciate that uh most of our uh, senior high school graduates are not going to work but uh are are going to college so that uh, we uh, the the teaching of the core courses should be beef up in order to address that 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 concern that they are most of them actually uh, as we will see in the next study uh, are going to college uh, next slide please I think this is the that's the last one for the first study so let me go now to this the, the second one and uh, so here uh, we already uh, mentioned that the employment and the entrepreneurship are identified as possible except for senior high school graduates uh, uh, when and when it was introduced. Next slide, please. Um, so the objective of the study is how uh, describe the labor market outcomes of of the senior high school graduates. So after graduation, I, we track uh, senior high school graduates in the labor market by looking at the labor force uh, survey and compare them with their peers. The peers that we used here are junior high school graduates as well as uh, second year college. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, that's what I mentioned. And, and we, we did some uh, uh, proper way of uh, to ensure that there will be a, a, a mangoes to mangoes comparison we match them together based on characteristics. This is basically what is described in the in the methodology that we did just just we did not just compute the averages, but we match them before we, com we compare them so that they were of the same uh, characteristics uh, uh, before comparing them uh, because the characteristics can create differences in terms of uh, preferences for work and what have what have you so. The, that's that's the, this is basically what this uh, 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 saying saying uh, this this slide is saying. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, the matching variables that we use are uh, sex, for instance, and household uh, personal characters like sex and household characters like location, residence, uh, the household size, the the education of parents as well as the age of parents. The same thing for. Uh, the other variable, the other methodology. There are two methodologies that are being used simultaneously to to get the matching uh, better. And as I've said, to get a mangoes to mangoes comparison. Okay, next slide, please. So this is the data that we used. Uh, we used the LFS survey from uh, July. Uh, remember that uh, the first graduates came out in April. Uh, so in July, also a quarter after uh, in 2018, and about eight quarters later after the last towards the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we have data uh, uh, thanks to the uh, PSA uh, that shared us the data. We were able to do channel. So what kind of outcomes are we looking at? So we look at labor force participation, employment, underemployment, work hours, basic pay, proportion working, in, working, proportion working in, the, in wage and salary work, and, and proportion are self-employed, and proportion are in industry. So that's that's the that's the uh, outcomes that we look at to compare uh, labor market outcomes. Okay, next slide, please. The other thing that we we were careful about is that uh, we can't be including everyone who is enrolled. We just limited it to 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 a, a specific uh, uh, group of cohorts that we thought that uh, will be in, in the senior high school program. So that from the data that we, we look at, this, is, this, is, uh, this includes children uh, 15 to 20 years old. Uh, uh, 
uh, in the data set. We did not include the one in for 14, even if there's a, a, a large number of them, because uh, uh, 14 is not considered a, a legal uh, a working age in, in, in the labor force survey. So that's not. So that's about takes about 86% of the total uh, enrollees in engineer high school. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the uh, descriptive statistics. So that's we're trading about 7,000, 7 to 9,000 per quarter uh, 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 re respondents. And so that's about 61 or 62,000 all in all in eight quarters. The next table that I'd like to to uh, highlight is this. So basically, the one in, in the in the bottom, which tells you the 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 uh, at school attendance rates of of the cohort. Uh, it tells you right away that 75 percent, indeed, uh, the the children who were, who we interviewed uh, said almost three quarters of them say are going to college are going to college essentially. So that's for for. Uh, that's for grade 10, 75 percent. For grade 12, that's 77 percent. And for second year college, that's that's uh, for, uh, that's 84 percent. So that basically, uh, what this table is telling us is that the they made good with their plan that they will be going to college rather than uh, going to the labor market. Okay, next slide, please. This is a summary of the uh, labor market outcome. So what this is saying is that about for uh, uh, grade 10, about 22% are in the labor force. Uh, and for grade 12, that's 23%. And for second year college, that's 16%. So uh, among them, there's, there is uh, it's saying that 84% are employed uh, for grade 10, 79% uh, are employed for grade 12. and. Uh, 81% are employed for second year college. So like, for example, the basic pay will be about 300, daily pay for for, uh, uh, for grade 10 is 302, uh, for grade 12 is 316, and for second year college that's 397. So that, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the structure that you can get. And 68% uh, 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 of grade 10 are, are are in wage and salary work, and 69% uh, for grade 12, and 69 as also 69% for a second year college. So that's basically the the rough uh, averages that you can get from labor market outcomes of of uh, of of the cohorts that we are looking at: grade 10, grade 12, and second year college. Next slide, please. This one tells you about uh, just graphing to you the, the the patterns of movements of the outcomes across the uh, eight quarters. So, for instance, the 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 first graph on the right left top left is saying that the the labor force participation of, of senior high schools is increasing towards the rate, although most of them dropped by by the time when the uh, at the approach of the of the pandemic uh, and and the the employment of, of 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 grade 10 is flat, uh, uh, and so and and the employment of uh, college uh, second year college is going down. So it's that's that's uh, the, so that's that's what this graph is, is trying to tell you. So basically, uh, the pattern. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this one tells you hours, basic pay, and and. Uh, in in wage and salary workers and self-employed and in industry, so that's that's the that's the uh, story of these graphs. Next slide, please. Now, let me try to uh, discuss uh, how did we assess uh, the 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 labor market outcome. So basically, uh, this table tells you that uh, when you have a higher labor for participation, that's a, that's a plus. So that's the arrow moving upward. Uh, when you have a higher employment net, that's also a plus. Uh, when, uh, so, are moving forward. When you have a lower employment rate, that's that's the, that's a desired outcome as well. You have you have to, uh, you need more lower uh, and employment rate. Okay, and uh, for visible unemployment, also uh, you, you want that down. For work hours, you want more work hours for them. And for wage rates, of course, you want high wage rates. And in the, the the last three or maybe are controversial for some people, but let me just try to say what we are, what I'm 
looking at. So in, I, if you have a uh, in wage salary worker, that's a plus, uh, an increase of that's a plus because of uh, more stable income. Uh, and and, and uh, for self-employment, that's a, uh, that's a, a, that's a, a negative because of, of less stable income. And in industry, that's a plus because uh, on average, the labor market is saying that the, the average wage in industry is higher. Okay, so that's, that's the, that's the, the explanation of this table I'm trying to show you how to how I assess the the whether there's a positive or negative uh, effect in, in the labor market of being senior high school uh, and their peers. Next slide, please. This is the heart of the result. So this basically its column is an is an equation and it is summarized here. So let me try, try to walk you through how to read this table. So basically in the left and the uh, second column tells you in, in the left is in the labor force, tells you that grade 10 compared to grade 12, we have 8.6% 8, 8 uh, higher employ, uh, labor force participation rate. Uh, compared to second year college, uh, second year college have lower uh, employment rate by 7.5%. The average actually employment rate in data, uh, that's the analysis about 19.6% uh, for this group. Uh, for uh, employment, you have a uh, higher uh, for grade 10 by, by 5.7 or, or 6%. And uh, for uh, compared to college, the college uh, enrollment rates have, uh, uh, have higher, uh, is higher by 5.0 or, or, or 6%. So that's, that's, that's how you read the table in sensibly and the, the average is about 78% enrollment rate. So that let me try to, so maybe you are not, uh, this is not readable anyway. I'll try to summarize it in, 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 in pictures. And the next slide, please. So what actually is the result? This is the, the, uh, the second column is the desired one, the same as the first mentioned earlier. You see the highlighted one, you, that the, the only thing that uh, the senior high school is, is performing better than, the, than uh, grade 10 is in, uh, in, base, is in wages. They have a higher wages uh, compared to, but all the rest of the, uh, uh, according to the way I an analyzed it, all the rest uh, they are not performing better than 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 grade ten uh, graduates. But compared to senior uh, to two year college, you have seen more uh, actually. Like for example, they have more labor force participation uh, uh, compared to second year college, and we have uh, lower underemployment rate. They have more hours work. More of them are in wage uh, uh, salary work and uh, less of them are in and self being self-employed and more of them are in industry. So basically, so the, you see that uh, uh, it's not it's, it's not clear how you will compare. You just see that there's uh, in some aspects it's, it's better in, in other aspects it's not. So uh, I, I've not wager into uh, parametrically saying whether it's good or bad. But so what I, the next slide summarizes this. Uh, Next slide, please. So basically, what you are saying is that only 20% of our senior high school graduates enter the labor force. Like 70%, more than 70% of them continue with their education. And there's a mixed uh, labor market outcomes, uh, uh, which does not really show, from my perspective, whether there's a clear advantage or disadvantage compared to uh, junior high school graduates uh, and uh, the second year uh, uh, college completers. To be college. Okay, sorry. And uh, last slide, next slide, please, just to give you a summary. So basically, what we are trying to say, we, we, we need to examine our employment entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial objectives. At least, of course, we already know that we, we only ha are happy with 20%. Uh, because, as we as you already said, most of them are going to college. So we better prepare them for college because most of them are going to college. And, 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 and that should be the 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 uh, so how we would uh, promote employment and employment should be should have this information. The other one is that there's a labor market outcomes up to this time, up to this up to 20, uh, April 20, 2020, uh, There's still not clear uh, advantage of of uh, being senior high school graduates over uh, over grade ten or, or over uh, uh, or compared to second year college. The other thing that we I'd like to highlight is the type of employment. So in terms of wage employment, grade 10 are performing better than second year, uh, than, 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 uh, than grade 12, which of course is performing better than, uh, if, that's, uh, if, if that's the criteria. In terms of self-employment, 
the second year college are performing better than than uh, grade 12 and, and, and grade 12 performing better than grade 10. So, so this is an unfolding story that uh, we would like to 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 continue to study because until we such sign that we'll know where what's the niche of of the senior high school graduates in the labor market. So uh, we we would like to uh, end with a saying that that uh, we should remember that that the employment of our graduates is not only the problem of the school system, but uh, but also the firms and of course the society as uh, by implication the society in general. We hope that these studies has clarified for us some of the emerging uh, uh, emerging trends uh, from the labor market on what has happened to our senior high school graduates and, and inform us and, and, and make decisions in terms of uh, adjustments we need to do in the senior high school curriculum, in the firm hiring, and even in the preparation of uh, in the regulations, government regulations relative to uh, uh, to employment uh, for uh, uh, differentiating, for instance, uh, junior high school from senior high school, which we thought by the time when the study, when the study was done was not yet very clear. I, I think I, 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 that's my last slide. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Orbeta, for your um, comprehensive and thought-provoking presentation. So stimulating that uh, as of now, we already have lots of questions in our um, chat box. Okay. So we will be, um, deal with those questions later uh, after we have uh, during the open forum. So the presentation of Dr. Arbeta, as you have seen, underscored the importance of two main actors, uh, the government and the private sector. And to uh, enrich our uh, discussion this afternoon, we invited um, as our first discussant, none other than the Department of Education to give its views on the study's findings and recommendations. We are very honored to have with us today the Director of DepEd's Bureau of Curriculum Development. Um, and um, uh, she is also Chair of the Senior High School National Task Force and the President of the Association of DepEd Directors. She has been recently assigned as the lead official um, in the DepEd working team for the creation of a private uh, education office. And she is also uh, the department's gender focal point, global inventory of regional and national qualifications framework, and global citizenship uh, education. She has a Master of Arts in Education, major in curriculum and instruction from uh, the University of the Philippines in Diliman, and a Master of Educational Management and Leadership from the University of Sydney under the Australia Development Scholarship. Friends, uh, Director Jocelyn Andaya. Director Andaya, the floor is now yours, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, allow me to share my screen first. Yes, so uh, good afternoon. Am I uh, heard, please? Yes, ma'am. Very well. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So good afternoon and thank you for inviting the Department of Education to be part of this public forum on senior high school graduates, prospects and challenges in the labor market. Um, I will provide comments on the two papers and share updates also on what the department is doing to advance the cause of senior high school program. First, the department agrees on several findings and recommendations, but would want to also point out that several of these have already been addressed, the recommendations have already been addressed by the department even before the first uh, uh, discussion paper was um, released. Uh, both studies actually point to the need to review the senior high school program as, of, uh, as is of course an SOP for any program of the Department of Education, uh, but specifically focusing on several features of the senior high school program, such as work immersion, employment, and entrepreneurial objectives and the work preparation component of the senior high school curriculum. At the outset, I wish to say that clearly there are several gaps in the implementation of the senior high school program, but that I also wish to say that several inroads have been made to make the program responsive to the needs of the learners and those of the country. But I wish to further emphasize 
that uh, the success of the senior high school program needs a whole of government approach. Whilst the DepEd um, prepares the learners for the four exits by actively engaging um, multi-stakeholders, it also acknowledges that it must work more assiduously um, with other government agencies, private sectors and NGOs, uh, civil societies towards convergence by affording several opportunities for our learners to have options after graduating from basic education. Um, for the first discussion paper of uh, the team of Mr. Uh, Aniceto and his team, let us be mindful of the context and time the data were gathered to better understand the study. Since the study was finished in December 2018, the data gathering started perhaps as already been articulated the early part of 2018, which means this is the first cohort of senior high school students who graduated from that program. We can then imagine the apprehension, anxiety, and perhaps excitement of our grade 12 uh, learners. This was also the time when the full impact of senior high school uh, was just beginning to be felt by the industry and other possible employers of our graduates. Therefore, I'd like to believe that many companies were unprepared for the prospect of having to employ graduates from basic education. I have come across this from attending fora, specifically in uh, 2018 and sometime uh, 2019, on uh, senior high school possible employability, senior high school learners possible employability. What I found out was many companies' uh, rules on hiring have not changed. Uh, one concrete example is that they're still hiring those who are at least in their second year college, 18 years old. Others would just really turn away any high school graduate, while others were more um, doubtful about what senior high school graduates can do. At that time, even the Civil Service Commission, this was in 2018, had not included in their uh, QS or qualification uh, standards the skills of our senior high school graduates. It was only in 2019 when it came out with a memo, I think memorandum order number 12 series of 2019, acknowledging uh, amendment of training experience and eligibility requirements for administrative aid five and six positions, but not enough to really address the uh, competencies and skills of our senior high school graduates that our senior high school graduates possess. Uh, admittedly, many were unprepared for the prospect of hiring senior high school graduates. The uncertainty, because like what Brother Armin, the then secretary mentioned, that the senior high school program is a different animal, was something that the uh, greater business and other government sectors weren't ready for yet. Our very own students chose the familiar route, and that is the academic exit, because that is a path known to them and to their parents. Uh, as borne by the results of the discussion paper and, of course, the tracer study that was conducted by the Department of uh, Education through the Bureau of Curriculum Development, uh, which made use of the same cohort of senior high school graduates in 2020. As to work immersion, as early as 2017, we have received comments specifically from the automotive sector that the in the curriculum uh, guy is not enough to do hands on training. Also, we also uh, responded to this need by uh, releasing Director Andaya. Ma'am. Um, we lost you, but you're still in the meeting room. Hello, ma'am. There is a problem in the um, internet connection of Director Andaya. We are waiting for her to come back. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Perhaps we can uh, proceed. We can uh, um, have uh, our next discussion, and then we will. We can come back to. Uh, we can return to Director Andaya. 
Okay, while Director Andaya is um, fixing uh, her um, internet connectivity, we will um, let's listen to our um, next discussant. Okay, so okay, let's move um, in the meantime to our um, representative from the private sector. As um, as we all know, the private sector plays an important role, not just as employers of, of the products of our education system, but also as partners in training and skilling our graduates. And with us today is uh, the uh, Executive Director of the Philippine Business for Education, or PBED, uh, which is a nonprofit organization founded in 2006 by the country's top business leaders as a response to the need for greater education and economy alignment. She is a human capital and human capital development and education specialist with a significant experience in nonprofit management, program management, public policy, and communications. She earned her master's degree from Harvard University and her bachelor's degree in political science from the Ateneo de Manila University. She is also an independent director of a fintech startup. Friends, Executive Director Lovelane Balisote. Edie Balisote, the floor is now you. yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you very much, PIDS, for inviting PBED. Thank you, Dr. Arbeta and team for presenting the studies. Um, just to give you a bit of background of what we do, uh, although our MC has um, already said or talked about PBED, but Philippine Business for Education is a nonprofit organization and we advocate for better quality education to help Filipino youth lead productive lives. Um, as a policy advocacy organization, we specifically work in the areas of teaching and learning and workforce development. Today's event and the research that was just presented um, are welcome additions to our policy advocacy efforts, especially to our um, workforce development initiatives, because research always gives us advocates a much needed dose of reality. Uh, my remarks today has two parts, uh, my direct comments on the studies presented and a sharing of our experience in helping K-12 graduates as they transition from school to employment. Um, the purpose of my comments, um, not necessarily to you know, discredit or credit the, the studies, but it's, it's to add that it's to add to the discussions on, on K-12 and how we, we manage education to employment, <clears throat> excuse me, in general. Um, let me start with my comments, and I want to preface this part by saying, yeah, that my comments are are really to inform or to 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 add to the discussion and and hopefully um, uh, inform some of the conversations that will happen in the open forum. Um, I have three three main points, um, uh, and the main points are flashed on your screen, and I will actually go through them one by one. Um, these studies uh, that were presented, the two studies that were presented, corroborate what we already know on the ground, right? That quality basic education begets improved higher education and employment outcomes. Um, an improved and expanded K-12 system um, is positively correlated with demand for more higher education or college post-secondary education. Um, the qualifying terms here, though, are improved and expanded. And so as such, it is unsurprising that there's no differentiation in income between junior high schools, so grade 10 grad, um, completers and senior high schools, when competencies of a grade 12 graduate based on the 2020 um, estimate of the World Bank of the learning adjusted years of schooling are pegged at the level of a sixth grader. So if you have a grade 12 graduate, um, his or her competencies are that of, of a sixth grader no so when 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 the quality is is, is questionable it, it has implications on demand for more education for for employment of um, uh, prospects as well on the supply side um, however we know that um, employers might be open but when you look at the labor labor market and and again, and I'd like to highlight actually what Director um, uh, Joyce mentioned earlier now, that we have to look at these studies in the context of the time that the data was was gathered. This was in, in 2018 um, uh, and even in 2020 where, you know, COVID is, is, is raging. Um, 
the, the but employers are spoiled for choice. There are a lot of of college graduates um, uh, that are unemployed, uh, or college degree holders um, unemployed. There are people currently now who are um, um, being laid off, more experienced, um, but maybe not college degree holders, but are more experienced and were were. Um, uh laid off because of the pandemic and so what is, what kind of labor market are um is our k-12 graduates actually entering right and are they being squeezed out of this because of of maybe um because they can't com compete at the level of the credentials but also at the at the experience um and then in just in terms of of the lack of the the there's a lack or or there's a mismatch in 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 people's interpretations of of quality of the proxy so like when when um dr beta's team found out that or saw in their in their study right that um employers are saying oh we we, do, we don't really know whether you know k-12 graduates are mature or like um they can do the job etc um we also need to look at how how k-12 um the, the diploma of a k-12 graduate um proxies or signals to to the to the market um a, a particular uh, graduates competencies um, secondly, and this is the second point I want to make, um, stated interest though, uh, because K-12 graduates were saying that, you know, they wanted to, to go to college, uh, might not actually be what actually happens. Um, stated interest might not be actualized. So it is worthwhile to have more data on post-graduation outcomes specific to education and, um, and information on barriers that hinder the graduates from actualizing their experience. Uh, aspirations. It would be good to know college enrollment numbers and whether they actually followed through on what they wanted or if they just stated what they wanted to want, meaning, you know, they wanted to go to college, they, they said that in the FGDs or in the survey, but did they actually enroll, right? Um, 2018, 2019, this also um, coincided with free tuition um, the the law on the free tuition for tertiary education. So, what what are the the other factors that would have contributed to to some of these results? Um, the the tricky the tricky thing with education is there is an aspirational aspect to it, right? Meaning people do want to invest in the in themselves and get better qualified. However, actual investments might be different because as what we are seeing in the work that we're doing. Um, especially with the youth uh, in 2020, when we did a survey of, because in, in PBED, we work a lot with youth, not in education, employment, and training. Um, and the pandemic um, like definitely had a, had a, a, um, an impact on, on the numbers of, of, peop of the youth who are not in education, employment, and training, and, and in terms of their aspirations. And so um, whenever there are shocks, they, they kind of like put education on hold because they need to contribute to their families. They go to employment and then they go back to school. So, so their their aspirations might not necessarily be what's actually happening, right? Um, and so it would be good to look at the factors that could help keep students in school and truly benefit from their learning. Um, useful data to look at could be their vulnerability to becoming NEAT. Um, I mentioned this earlier. So many of them, many of the youth actually became NEAT even though they wanted to go to college, they deferred enrollment even with free tuition because of, of the pandemic. So many, many factors that could, that could um, influence also labor market um, outcomes. And it's not just specific to, to K to 12. Um, there also has to be, we think, better data sharing between colleges and K-12 schools. Um, because in a survey conducted by the ADB in 2018 called Youth Education, um, Information, and Labor Market Outcomes, many career guidance officers mentioned that their main sources of information are college and university counterparts. So it, it would be good to also have that better collaboration between you know K to 12 the K to 12 system and the and the um, higher education system because um, they 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 share a lot of information and so how can we really bridge this gap between the aspirations of of our youth and what they actually have access to um, because and 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 related to that therefore um, college and post-secondary education readiness should also be taken into account as we redesign the curriculum and conduct exit assessments. Um, because, you know, education just prepares the pathways, right? Um, it doesn't really guarantee certain things. And and I'd like to pick um, pick up uh, the, a point that Dr. Urbeta mentioned earlier that are we, are we okay with the 20% going to, to employment? Well, 
I, I would like to respond, even though it was a, maybe just a rhetorical question, but I would like to respond that, yes, well, if, if that is what the youth wants, then, or the youth want, then yes, maybe we, we should be okay with that. But how can we ensure that there is that alignment between what they aspire for and the pathways that are made available to them? And so to my third point, um, policy recommendations should address overall learning quality and information asymmetry when it comes to education and career pathways. Um, uh, now, of course, we want to maximize the return on education investments, right? So if we, we, we put more kids in school, we make them stay in school, the return should be higher. And actually, uh, the, the, the chart that um, Dr. Urbeta shared, you know, with the arrows up, down, um, and the, the highlighted parts, I found very, very helpful and useful because um, it gives us an um, kind of like just a snapshot, given, of course, the particular context of when the, the, the survey was done and when, what, what happened, no? um, um, of what are the possible gaps and things that we can still do to, 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 in a way, improve those career pathways or education and career pathways that I mentioned earlier. Um, I just worry that we might be communicating the wrong things when we say that there is not much difference in employment outcomes of junior high school or grade 10 completers in, in, the, in the study um, and senior high school graduates. Because on the supply side, right, it, I think it would be good to look at it from the student's perspective who want to improve their chances. So they know, for example, that senior high school is a pre prerequisite to further education. They can't enroll to college if they don't have senior high school. Um, so, um, and and they also know that, they also know that um, for, for what they're hearing in the media, that, you know, employers are, are saying that, oh yeah, we prefer college graduates because we're spoiled, well, we're spoiled for choice and maybe they're just more mature. And so, so maybe they are also saying that, oh, okay, I want to, I want to like go to college, even though that it's 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 more of like thinking about more in the in the long term, um, but in terms of just purely employment outcomes, um, I think a more useful comparison is actually comparing grade twelve and second year college. The 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 the. I think the rightmost column in in the in the slide, um, who did because if if you're looking at um, those people who I, I think this was in 2020 but if if they are able to because your grade 12 graduates um in in 20 i think they used labor the the labor force um data of 2020 i think it it we can surmise that k-12 graduates um although it's a bit mixed have in a way better post school outcomes no because like looking at the type of jobs um and not just having jobs per se, we can look, we can see that they have like lower unemployed, underemployment, they work more hours, they, they have, they have maybe better um, um, quality or type of jobs or what um, the ILO calls good jobs, jobs that are stable and have um, an employment contract. Um, and we actually see this in our work in, um, in, in PBED called A Future That Works. It is um, funded by the City Foundation, wherein you know companies themselves um, are able to like define the skills requirements. We partner with the DepEd so that there's better collaboration between the schools and and companies. And and the idea really is to kind of yeah like define these pathways and then in a way strengthen them so that as the youth transition from school to work, um, they're better guided. Um, just sharing with you, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, sharing with you our experience, um, because we kind of knew some of this data, right, um, um, on the ground. Um, we we wanted to address this main issue of, of information asymmetry. And, and um, the way we wanted to do this is by three things. Um, shining a light on the issues, like... Uh, making sure that we have a robust information campaign um, and and thorough media work. Um, we wanted to improve the matching between um, senior high school track and OGT. And so this is where, you know, the partnership that I mentioned between DepEd and the private sector comes in. Um, and then actually doing something to create these platforms for, for these pathways that I mentioned. Um, so what, what was this experience based on? Um, if you go to the next slide, um, 
this is what we knew then in 2017 when we started this initiative that um only oh I, i'm the slide is missing a couple of words but only one in five uh, companies that we surveyed were ready to hire um k-12 graduates and three out of five were open but they were kind of like in a wait and see kind of thing um and basing on the enrollment um also of, of, of senior high school, um, about 40% we, we estimate that didn't want to, to go to college. Um, um, but, <clears throat> and in, 2020, in 2018, when we did a survey of over 140 companies in various sectors, we, and we did a matching of like um, the written competencies or targeted competencies of the K-12 curriculum and the entry level requirements of companies we saw that there is kind of like a there is a 93 percent match in in what they actually wanted to wanted um out of their entry level um hires and so given given this we we did these interventions the three things i mentioned um and we actually saw very interesting and very encouraging results uh, next slide please for for our um, efforts in in comms um, and partnerships and and doing career fairs, um, we were able to um, increase the readiness of companies to hire. So their hiring policies are now um, adjusted so that it can accommodate K to twelve graduates. So from one out of five, it became three out of five. Um, we reached um, big companies. Well, one hundred ninety six companies. We reached them through our. Um, advocacy efforts, and we were able to open these um, immersion and employment um, positions for for K to twelve in in a kind of like affirmative action um, uh, exercise, and and the idea is kind of just showing companies right um, that that K to twelve graduates can do the job, um, given of course additional training still, um, but they have the the soft skills um, and the technical skills required for entry level. Um, positions um, and and so we wanted to see whether this actually kind of like translated to to real things, right? And so we had a second iteration of of this project called First Future 2.0, and we engaged um, more companies um, to to participate in career pathways workshops. So designing these career uh, pathways, um, doing curriculum um, uh, write shops, OJTs, working with uh, with with Dep Ed, Tesda, and the UP Open University to to look at training programs um, and. And so far, we're, we're, we, we've reached um, about 800 youth um, who, have, who have enrolled and benefited from the program in terms of like upskilling and reskilling. Um, but all told, I, want, I, I just wanted to, to mention that um, for, for um, these studies, I think um, it's great to have data on what are the, the career aspirations of the youth, um, what are their educational aspirations as well. Um, and then also getting data from the from the employers as to you know what are their expectations, what um, um, what can they actually contribute as well because it's not just um, the deaf ed's problem or the, the students' problem, but it's really a multi sectoral um, problem. So so and 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 bridging those those different aspirations and expectations. Um, and and making sure that we limit the information asymmetry, so that when we improve education, the quality of education, and the the career pathways, um, we can really help the youth transition from from school to employment much better. Um, and so, yeah, I'll I'll pause here, and I'm sure there are many more questions and discussions um, in the chat and in the open forum. Um, thank you for listening, and looking forward to the discussion later. Thank you very much, Executive Director Lab Basiliote of uh, the PIDEN. Okay, and we are very pleased to know about um, the initi initiatives of PIDEN. And uh, thank you also for sharing um, the results of your projects. Okay, we can um, unpack more of uh, um, your presentation later during the open forum. Okay, at this point, um, let me call again uh, Director Joyce Adaya of uh, DepEd uh, to. Um, um continue her her uh, presentation now director uh, choice
Hi, Director Joyce. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, Michila, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Michila? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Yes, uh, Michila, can you hear me? Yes, Director Joyce, uh, we can hear you very well, ma'am. It seems uh, Director Joyce cannot hear me. Okay. Michila, can you hear me? Yes, can Director Joyce. Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Oh. Sorry, these are challenges of uh, connectivity, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm ready to yes. proceed now. I hope I get this yes, connected again. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You may proceed now, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Let me just share the initiatives of uh, the Department of Education in terms of, uh, uh, was this, support for the senior high school program. And I'd like to start with the... Uh, this slide yeah okay so uh, can this be read by everyone yes ma'am Sheila yes yes okay, ma'am we can you. see your slide all right yeah uh, so what are the recent initiatives of uh, DepEd in terms of supporting the senior high school program first is of course we were able to conduct a senior high school tracer study this was done uh, last week, um, I'm sorry, last uh, quarter of 2018, and then we're able to finish it last uh, uh, 2019 or early 2020. And then we have an ongoing review of the K-12 curriculum. We have finalized the basic education and trip program. Uh, the DepEd spark active participation in the initiatives for the PQA, for the Philippine Qualifications Framework and Philippine Skills Framework, and a tripartite meeting with CSC or the Civil Service Commission and chaired on the Senior High School Graduates Employability Proposal. Let me just uh, uh, detail them to you. Uh, for the for the tracer study, uh, these were the questions that uh, we sought to answer in that uh, tracer study: the distribution of the senior high graduates, the distribution of the graduates based on curriculum exits. Uh, the considerations of senior high school graduates in selecting their curriculum exits and the issues encountered by the graduates in different curriculum exits. You can say, uh, of course, that perhaps this is a continuation of uh, Mr. Orbeta's te team's um, uh, research. So we were able to focus on the first batch of uh, graduates in school year 2017-2018 from purely public senior high schools. The probability sampling was used to select the participants from four major areas in the country, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, and NCR. And from each of the major areas, a simple random sample of six divisions was done. Each division was a representation of each socioeconomic cluster as defined by the Philippine Statistics Authority in 2019. And from each division, two schools were random, randomly selected. The number of respondents from each school was computed using proportionate sampling. Uh, the study utilized survey questionnaire, questionnaires covering five parts, uh, profile, questions for those pursuing college education, questions for those employed, questions for those engaged in business, entrepreneurship, and questions for those enrolled in short-term training courses or middle-level skills. Um, and the data obtained from the survey were analyzed using descriptive statistics. And so... The distribution of the senior high school graduates based on curriculum exits, 82.67% is more or less uh, affirms the study of uh, uh, Mr. Orbeta's team as regards the number of graduates, uh, the first cohort of senior high school learners who proceeded to higher education. Then 10.22% uh, were employed, uh, 1.3% put up a business and 0.42% went to middle level skills training. So uh, what were the findings? There were more enrollees in the home economics and industrial arts under the TVL track, and more learners took up the general academic strand under the academic track. Majority of our senior high school graduates of school year 2017-2018 pursued tertiary education regardless of the tracks taken in senior high school. And then internal and external factors influence the decision of the senior high school graduates in pursuing college education. Uh, the 
the last one is about the different issues encountered by the senior high school graduates based on the curriculum exits. This was also pointed out by Ms. Love when she said that we need to really look at how the graduates think about what um, what strand or what track they are they are choosing. And so uh, in pursuing higher education, they said there's difficulty of the subject, non-crediting of senior high subjects. This has been most apparent uh, during 2017 and 2018 and the early part of 2019 when uh, several uh, regional offices were saying that Many of our senior high school graduates were were interested in universities and colleges simply because the chosen course in college does not match the senior high school course taken up. And then rejection from the degree program, it's a similar um, issue, travel related issues such as distance and security concern and high expectations from teachers. What were the considerations in pursuing entrepreneurship? The issues encountered by those who engage in business are issues related to handling customers and financial management. For pursuing employment exit, issues concerning those who pursue are the this exit are the following. Preference in hiring of uh, the employers and qualifications for employment. And of course, those who pursued middle level skills development, they said that there's misalignment of the senior high school track with the test the courses and the quality of senior high school training. And recommendations. The FED can develop a policy to strengthen the alignment of TVL curriculum with the four curriculum exits, a national assessment to evaluate the readiness and competencies of the students for the demands of college education could be done. And then the FED should co coordinate with DOLE to ensure that senior high school graduates, especially those below 18 years old, are protected from unfair labor practices. There were reports about some of our uh, um, uh, graduates being, uh, what's this? Uh, uh, experiencing unfair labor practices. Also, the school guidance program should be strengthened and there's a need to evaluate implementation of the senior high school curriculum to examine the gap between the intended curriculum and the implemented curriculum. As I said, uh, this re tracer study can, uh, was this, uh, is a continuation of the study made by the team of uh, Dr. Orbeta. And uh, other than that, the other initiatives of the Department of Education are the other uh, one is the joint delivery voucher program for senior high school technical vocational livelihood specializations so that our students enrolled in schools uh, offering TVL will still be able to do hands on training and uh, yeah, hands on training by going to TVIs or technical vocational institutions where there's adequate equipment and tools and where there's capable teachers. And so this was implemented in uh, 2017, 2018, and up to now, we're still implementing it. And then also, uh, we've, we've came out with the financial education program, uh, which is a curriculum-based process of teaching and learning about financial knowledge and skills anchored in the And uh, we need to be able to, uh, to uh, especially our uh, senior high school graduates on, on finances. And I have already mentioned that uh, uh, we have been able to increase uh, work immersion hours from eight Director Andaya, we lost you again, ma'am. Hello, Director Andaya, can you hear me? Yes, she's still in the meeting room, however. Hello, ma'am. Director Andaya, can you hear me, ma'am? Uh, we lost you again. Uh, would it be possible to unshare your uh, your PowerPoint uh, presentation and you may just continue without it? Ma'am, can you hear me?
Okay. Um, we lost his, we lost uh, Director Andaya again. Uh, perhaps we can uh, just proceed uh, to the next uh, part of our uh, um, webinar and then Director Andaya can just, you know, expound I'm here. her. Okay, Director Andaya, thank God you're back. I'm so, okay. I'm so okay. sorry. Okay, it's, can you see? Okay, my, ma'am. No, can you ma see my comments? No, no, ma'am. Um, you already shared your presentation. Uh, would it be possible for you to continue without it? Of course, of course, I can. I okay, can. ma'am. I think it's better. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Other than the the joint delivery voucher program that we implemented sometime in early 2019. We were able also in uh, curriculum, uh, our curriculum efforts. Um, I'm sorry, we were Director able to. Director Andayas, can you pick up from the part where you were saying something about work immersion? Uh, ah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Can can you yes. um start from that uh, part? Uh, what I because tried to. Yes, what I tried to mention was that uh, from the initial findings of uh, the team of Dr. Orbeta that uh, the number of hours will not suffice to, to address the, the hands-on training of our and uh, work immersion needs of our uh, grade 12 students, we were able to increase from the number of hours from 80 to 320 uh, sometime in 2017. And then we released another work immersion guidelines in 2018 to also incorporate some of the changes we made for work immersion to ensure that our learners are given the appropriate training and uh, sometime this uh, last year we also were able to uh, uh, release a rapid order as a uh, rapid memorandum sorry as regards uh, work immersion during crisis situation so that's it for work immersion and then uh for for your joint delivery voucher program, uh, this is a response to. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I was already able to discuss the joint delivery. Can I? Uh, I'd like to move on to uh, some curricular changes we have made as regards the unique tracks or specializations. These are standard programs that. I'm sorry. Aside from the standard programs that we have implemented, we have we have been able to entertain unique specializations, and one uh, several of those unique specializations include cacao production, dental technology, uh, call center services, healthcare services, heavy equipment, and so on. In other words, we have been able to introduce around ten unique tracks and specializations, a nod to the to the ever changing uh, needs of our. Uh, partners, especially the, the companies. And then uh, we have strengthened our industry business sector partnership. Just recently, uh, DepEd was able to partner with Microsoft and uh, the employees, uh, uh, ECOP, to raise the employability of our senior high school graduates and prepare them with skills for the modern workplace. We were also able to in partnership with tourism, uh, in this education and hospitality and uh, we just signed a memorandum of understanding with them sometime uh, early uh, last month also uh, as as uh, miss love mentioned we are in partnership with the philippine business for education as regards first future building tomorrow's workshop and uh, in partnership also with concentrics this is a partnership for convergence on tourism education and hospitality and we have conducted several workshops in response to, to this. So we have uh, made sure that our um, uh, offerings are aligned and validated by our industry partners. So as to the question of are we really involving companies or our the business sector in the crafting of the curriculum? Yes. Um, we also have partnership for virtual work immersion for call center services under First Future 2.0. And this is not, again, uh, the entire partnership that I'm talking about because I know that in the in the field, like for instance, in the divisions in the regions, there are many far more partnerships that have been inked by our SDOs and ROs to help our senior high school learners. We also have partnership with Marina. They are the ones actually who approved 
the the they recommend approval of of the applications of some of maritime schools uh we also had national training of trainers for senior high school maritime program at and uh, our continuing partnership with other government agencies and industries such as for the high senior high school implementation among the state universities and colleges and the local universities and colleges and we have a partnership with CAAP for the proposed aviation specialization and uh, feel uh feel aapa philippine association of amusement parks and attractions for the proposed theme park and attraction specialization in the senior high school program we're trying to uh what's this uh, finish this but because of the pandemic some of this got stalled but uh, we would want to pick up from here and uh, uh what's this continue the partnership so uh what what still what immediate uh, things do we need to do or or actions we still need to uh, rationalize the TVL specialization so that uh, only those schools that really have the necessary tools and equipment are able to uh, was this to offer the TVL specialization and add, and we're helped here by the Asia Development Bank and then there's continuing engagement with uh, the civil society with private sectors with LGUs and of course companies. We need to uh, still review the senior high school curriculum, taking into account the needs of the industry. And uh, we would like to uh, follow up on our tracer study so that we, we can disaggregate by, by track. Uh, those those uh, concerns, I mean by track. So um, thank you. Those are some of the initiatives that the DepEd uh, has done and continue to do in order to uh, enhance this, the implementation of the senior high school program. Magandang uh, hapon muli sa ating lahat. At magandang hapon din po sa inyo at salamat po uh, Director Jocelyn Andaya of uh, the Department of Education. We are very glad to know about uh, the initiatives of uh, the DepEd to uh, improve our uh, senior, um, um, high school program and especially um, your collaboration with the different sectors. Uh, multi-sectoral uh, collaboration is very important as ed basiliote has mentioned our education issues are um multi-sectoral issues which require multi-sectoral solutions okay so at this point let us um uh, now entertain um, the questions or participants but before we proceed to the q a i'd like to tell you that we won't have a poll today okay However, we'll pick three names from our WebEx participants, and each of them will receive a PIBS uh, notebook as a prize. And I will announce their names before we close the webinar. Okay, so at this point, um, I invite our speakers, Director uh, Jocelyn Andaya, Dr. Anset Orbeta, and E.D. Lovelyn Basiliote for the open uh, forum. Let us start with... Uh, Okay, Director Andayat, may if I may start with you, ma'am. I, I think you need to leave at four four o'clock. So if you could uh, answer first um, some of the questions. Okay, and we have some questions sure. here. Yes, yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we have some questions here, ma'am. Uh, which, um, okay, you mentioned about the work. In immersion you know? and you said that there has been an increase from um, 80 to 320 hours uh, according to your presentation that is correct okay which already answers what uh, the question of uh, Ronnie Tapnyo because he was saying that uh, it seems that the 80 hour immersion is uh, not enough okay so okay that is a good move from uh, the depth ed um but okay moving to another um topic which is about um curriculum um development i think um there was you you have some um you know you have initiatives of sitting down with industry with uh with with the industry in order to frame a really responsive curriculum can you tell us more about it ma'am yeah um uh, thank you in fact uh, when we made the curriculum it wasn't just the the a product of uh Dep ed it was actually multi-sectoral in the sense that we've not just invited people from the academe 
but also from the industry. So for instance, if it's uh, on um, tourism, hospitality, we invited some uh, what's this? Uh, organizations from that particular sector to help us craft the curriculum. If it's in, in industrial arts, then we also invited some representatives from that sector, including e even the uh, BPOs, mm -mm. those in charge of BPOs. We were able to, to uh, invite them. So the curriculum wasn't just the work of, of one particular uh, sector, meaning the Department of Education. Yes, and there is continuing effort to, to you know, uh, engage them. In fact, uh, it's not just PBED that has, uh, well, PBED has always been working with us and our uh, number one advocate, uh, especially yes. in uh, uh, work immersion and ensuring the employability of our senior high school graduates. There are other organizations such as uh, PESA, okay? mm -hmm. and this can be also in, uh, for instance, in Cebu, in Davao, they are very active. Uh, we have the uh, PC, PCCI, okay, where uh, they also uh, reached out to us to help. Okay, thank you very much. I will um, get uh, Lovelings, uh, Edie Lovelings uh, comment on that too, because they have really very good uh, projects or programs towards um, improving um, towards curriculum development. But let me, um, uh, Director Andaya, there is another question for you here, which is about um, the, the maritime, the maritime track. What is the current direction of the HS, of, of the senior high school program in the maritime track? Yeah, uh, we'd like to have stronger collaboration with Marina because uh, I think our uh, partnership uh, stalled sometime in 2019, mainly due to change of administration, I think. And so um, we would like to, again, uh, uh, seek them out as regards uh, the TVL maritime mm -hmm. and uh, pre-baccalaureate maritime. That was the agreement made during their past administration. And we continued to, we continued to implement that uh, until now but we'd like to seek some guidance as regards uh, what what uh, courses okay. need to be offered okay thank you for your uh, response uh director andaya ed basiliote um we have some questions from uh for you here oh uh, we have one from Maria Lourdes Mendoza, and this is about uh, you. You have you've been you have done um, been collaborating uh, closely with the private sector. Do you have data on what employers actually say about their willingness or intention to employ senior high school graduates when more skilled individuals are available to fill in jobs in their companies? Perhaps you can you know share with us you know. Um, the data you get from uh, the private sector. Um, yeah, so actually I want to say that there's still a lot of work that needs to be done to socialize um, the competencies, the, the idea of, you know, like um, uh, socializing the competencies of K-12 to graduates to our employers. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our employers now are spoiled for choice. Mm. right like especially during the pandemic they are they, they they have college degree holders that are currently unemployed and are now looking for work um mm -hmm. because the economy is also not doing that well um you have um people who are skilled maybe with college degrees maybe without college degrees but were laid off because of the pandemic and are very right. actively um joining or trying to join the the the, the 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 work the workforce and so um in a way the employers are also saying well well if i have this wealth of choice right like mm. what what do why should i give the the the, the entry level job or the job to a k-12 graduate when i still need to i um uh, train them a bit more etc cetera, etc cetera, when, when i have like the better qualified like, or better skilled people so to a certain extent there has to be kind of like the socialization of the idea that a k-12 what are what are the things that um k-12 graduates are capable of doing um and secondly to a certain extent appealing to 
maybe the CSR um, um, sentiments or corporate social responsibility of employers to proactively train um, the future workforce. So um, it could be part more of a training or like earning while learning kind of set up. I think one, one, um, one one suggestion here by Mr. Brillantes in the chat box. I was like active in yeah. the chat also. Mm-hmm. Was um, if we can if we can consider working students um, and their working yes. hours as as yes. um, kind of like OGT hours or yeah. things like that. So part of the work immersion student. probably already. No? Correct. Correct. Uh-oh. So, um, so I think it's it's it would be it would be good to have um, employers expose or to expose employers to K to twelve. Um, uh, students and graduates so that they have a better sense like oh, okay um you know i will hire based on competencies mm-hmm. and not necessarily because of credentials um and okay. that's and that's something that we really advocate in pbed no that that mm-hmm. we need to to socialize the idea that um employers should hire based on competencies and not based on credentials but again on the competencies part though we need to also convince employers that k to 12 graduates are capable um, and and that's another like set of challenges that we need to to work on um, uh, with mm-hmm. DEP and with the private sector and and civil society. Mm-hmm. Ed Love, um, we have a question here from Dominador Gamboa about uh, if if the industry employment standards are properly aligned to enable access by entry level SA, um senior high school uh, graduates in in your. In your uh, presentation of the first future project, I think you mentioned that 93 of competencies of senior high school graduates, that the um actually they actually meet no the competencies required for entry level level positions. So matas na kasi yung 93. So, de ba? Can you? So, yeah, I, I just want to clarify that no, we did lang kasi like a simple comparison of like job okay. ads. We did a job okay. ads. Um, we also surveyed the the, the like um, 140 companies, asking them, okay, what are the competencies needed, or what do you require? By competencies, I mean what they know, what they can mm. do, and their attitudes mm. at work. Um, that, that that employers expect of um, a fresh hire, an entry level position hire. Um, and then we looked at the depth ed curriculum and then their target competencies. And we matched it. It was like simple matching lang. Um, oh, and we okay. saw that there was that there was that um alignment. alignment. I think that I think that what Mr. Dominador was asking is more on whether the policies of companies allow them to hire K to twelve. Because before I think in or the yeah, senior high school graduate, kasi in 2018 when we were doing this survey it was still pretty common for and i think even until now it's still pretty common if you look at job ads it always says two years college required or you know like college a, graduate a college degree required or college graduate required ganyan. so um we need to uh, so one of our advocacies in 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 the first future project was actually to remove that requirement na from the job ads and so, um, and so that's how we were able to see the change. You know, the the openness is one thing, but the readiness, the is, readiness. Um, is is another the thing. thing. And the readiness rec- um, the, uh, refer be, was that um, the readiness referred to the policies of companies when it comes to hiring. So we mm-hmm. had the we had the parang college credential removed yeah, in the sure. job ads so the the percentage of companies actually um, in terms of readiness increased from one out of five or 20 percent to about 60 percent so That's it's a matter of parang i mean the, the the companies had that we that we surveyed and we worked worked with um and so it's it's a lot of work requires a lot of follow through on um mm-hmm. unfortunately or maybe fortunately so mm-hmm. um a lot of work needs to be done to to to, in, to increase the readiness of companies thank uh, you very Sheila, much may I, may I add to what uh, Ms. Love yes go yeah. ahead director andaya okay i agree with uh, Ms. what miss love said uh and clearly the department of education needs to do more in terms of advocating and you know uh, marketing our senior high school graduates because uh, as has been mentioned also uh, several other companies still do not know what our uh, senior high school graduates can do well it is our job in the department of education to ensure that they are ready 
for the world of work, as we say, uh, to, to be gainfully employed, but at the same time, uh, they also need opportunities to show that they are ready. And that's where our partnerships with uh, the uh, private companies and even our government agencies, that's why I said at the outset that uh, it is a, a whole of government approach. We need to be able to ensure that those that have NCs or the national certificates, certificates. yes, will be able to use that okay in or uh, as an added credential to be hired okay because we know that other companies do not recognize that certification mm -hmm. so uh, it's it's something that uh, the department of trade and industry the department uh, the other uh, government agencies need to be able to uh, discuss together uh, we were very grateful to uh, the office of ASEC Tutai, uh, mm -hmm. Nikki, because she's been very, uh, she's also a staunch advocate of, of ensuring that uh, <laughs> our senior high school graduates are gainfully employed. Uh, she has been discussing with us labor market information. Thank you. Thank you, Director Joyce. Um, how about um, uh, this? Um uh, w one of the results or, or one of the things that Dr. Uh, Orbeta pointed out in, in, in uh, his presentation that the existing policies of the Civil Service Commission still do not consider yet the uh, senior high school program. Um, yeah. I, yes, yes. I think that uh, just recently, uh, the Office of USAC, Jess Mateo, is in, in, in charge also of the Bureau of Human Resource and Organizational Development, again met with uh, the representatives of the CSC, and I, I think the agreement there was to work with CHED uh, for, for some aspects of, of that said policy. But definitely, the CSC is slowly recognizing, uh, I'm not going to use the word slowly, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so is, sure. is, into, <laughs> is looking into how this can be addressed uh, post haste. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Director Joyce. Um, Dr. Orbeta, um, I'm not sure if you, um, you have a uh, date on this from your study, but Earl Victor Rosero is asking about uh, the tracks or strands of the 20% um, of uh, the sample who um, who wish to go to college. Would you have data on that from your study? I, 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 I didn't, did, I didn't uh, disaggregate uh, sorry, that. Of, of the, of the, of the remaining who wish to go to college because only 20%, yeah, yeah, actually, the, you, I have already shown uh, that the, the, there's no difference. Actually, I was happy to that the, the tracer study of uh, the director uh, and I mentioned also said that. Uh, even the TVL, uh, TVL uh, graduates are also going to college. So essentially, that's the... Uh, there is this anecdote about TVL actually what that we found out. Some of the many of the students are going to TVL for the for the hands-on. Like for example, one of the students that they're saying they said that the, the computer programming experience in TVL are better than the ACAD. So I want to be a computer programmer. So I go to TVL because I want to be a proficient programmer before going to college. So basically that's so here's the confusion about being in TVL and not going to college. So that, that's essentially an example, good example. So some students are very practical. They want, mm -hmm. uh, they, they want even if they go on to go to college, and they, and they, they know they're going to college, uh, they, they go into a track where that interests them uh, in terms of, of the skills that they want to, to learn and, 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 and progress in that kind of skill. So like, as I've said, in, 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 in computer programming, for instance, uh, so that's or in 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 going into computer engineering engineering or te technology and going into uh, a track in computer repairing uh, in in TVL, but all the while it's not that they would want to work right away. 
but mm -hmm. they want to prepare themselves uh, for college, uh, for for a college track uh, that 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 they want. So that that's that's those are the 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 uh, the angles that we are saying. So uh, in terms of uh, track, uh, there's no difference uh, in ter uh, of the proportion going. Uh, we were we were expecting that the TVL, us as everybody else is expecting, that those in TVL are going. Uh, more of them are going to college, but when you look at the, uh, when you ask them before they graduated, uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, 70, 70, 70, more than seventy against twenty uh, go, uh, going to employment. That's before mm -hmm. they graduated. When we look at the labor force survey, the, uh, uh, eight quarters of labor force survey from twenty eighteen July twenty eighteen to April twenty twenty, that's the same. And that's so. As I said, the uh, uh, so, in answer to Lab's question, whether they have, uh, they were able to, to fulfill their aspirations. Yes, in terms of the, in terms of, it's almost very, uh, it, it it coincides very much with the, uh, the expectation before graduation and and the labor for survey saying it's still seventy twenty, uh, uh, kind of. Uh, uh division between going to going to employment and 70 percent going to college so that that's what we get from the labor force survey and regardless of track that's just that's, that's regardless the, of track regardless okay. of track uh, the 20 percent sorry that uh do not pursue higher education yeah. um do we have they're in the labor force we have, yes and join the labor force uh, do we have data on their reasons for doing so? Let's say, is it because no. of you know income? No, there's no, there's no. Unfortunately, there's no. This is uh, we're using uh, the quarterly labor force survey okay. of, of, of of so that's, uh, that's Sheila. Quite... Yes, ma'am. The, 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 the tracer study would give you that's the reason. Yeah, uh, uh, we have we have that. In fact, uh, we're scheduling also uh, time and you know uh, a day where we can present our tracer study because it answers some of the questions raised by both uh, uh, Ms. Love and uh, Mr. Orbeta. But also to say, Mr. Orbeta, that um, we're looking uh, at uh, the cohort of our senior high school graduates enrolled in the academic track who did not pursue higher pursue ed, but higher. instead worked. Mm. Uh -huh. Because we, we would want to find out all. We we've always been saying that uh, all graduates, senior high school graduates, are are ready for any of the four exits. And so uh, we have not found. I mean, uh, in the tracer study, we also have our own uh, data, but it's just a handful. Perhaps in the next tracer studies that we'll be conducting, we'll be able to disaggregate the data. Thank you. Our fo the, the focus mainly of our discussion is they going into, you know, joining the labor market. How about, uh, you know, the other objective of the K-12 or the senior high school, which is pursuing entrepreneurship? Do we have data on, you know, data on this that you could share, uh, Director Andaya? Or yes, perhaps uh, we have uh, that data. Ibed? Yes, we have that data in the tracer study. It's around uh, 1.84 uh, of those that were surveyed. And one of the reasons uh, made was that they uh, wanted to continue the business of their of their uh, parents. Number two, that uh, they also would like to earn. Those were the top two reasons for putting up or, or going into entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, Ibi Basiliote, I see. I saw you nodding your head. Uh, would you like to, uh, you know, contribute something to this conversation on entrepreneurship? Uh, no, not not really, because we don't have data on that. Uh, so I don't want to say stuff that's not backed up by by information. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just affirming, I guess, the 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 response um that of of um director Andaya. That's yes. why I nodded. Okay, but I have a question for you here from. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Teodorico Dulay. So Sheila? he said, in real, yes, uh, uh, Dr. Arbeta, yes, go ahead, sir. Actually, the second paper tells you that 30% of uh, of the are in self employment. 30% uh, mm, of those who are in, of the 20% that went uh, to the labor market. 30 percent of the 20%, okay, okay. Are in self employment. So oh, that's so that 20%, it doesn't really. And sixty percent are in in are are in wage uh, wage employment. I okay, very so that, good. That's, very that's, 
So that, that's, okay. that's, the, yeah. that's the proportion. Thank you very much. Uh, the, um, Actually, Dr. just better for that clarification. Yes. Yes, um, Sheila, sorry it, to, to interject, mm -hmm. but just because Dr. Arbeta is already looking at the data, I had a clarifying question, <laughs> actually. For the for the labor force survey, when you compared the the, uh, the outcomes of, of grade 10, uh, grade 12, and, mm -hmm. and uh, second year college, Dr. Second. Arbeta, um, did, is there a way to just disaggregate it, um, the, the findings, just for um, the labor force survey results of 2018? Because I think you, you had four quarters, right, in 2018 and then in 2020. So just specific to the 2018, because quite curious as to how our senior high school graduates um, uh, fared compared to the second year college second year. Um, uh, holders who, are, who did not go through K-12. Actually, so I don't know if that might be a better comparison to make um, uh, since they're not, they don't have K-12. Maybe the, you can look at the graphs. The uh, It's actually not four, but uh, eight quarters. So that's... Uh, ah, oh, that's sorry. Yeah. Years. So like yeah. the graph, if you want to look at like, uh, can, can someone show the, like slide 27 where the graphs are? Okay. Gwen, so can you uh, flash that please, or Gwen? Slide 27 of Dr. Orbetas. 27 and 28. Sorry, Sheila, it became like a very, I know. <laughs> it's okay. Question. I think some of our <laughs> participants are also interested to know, you know, because uh, they are also, some of them are, are also researchers or in the academia. So. Uh, just a question also, Dr. Orbeta, because uh, I was uh, reading the, uh, that particular uh, section and I said, are you referring to fourth year or uh, grade 10, really? Grade 10 compu uh, computer. Grade, grade yes. 10, grade 10, grade 10 lang po, computer. Uh, ang, 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 that's, that's the description sa labor force survey. Uh, those that did not proceed to senior high. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, if you are considered in the labor force, you are not supposed to be a full-time student. So if you are going yeah, but, to school... But what, I, what if they went to alternative learning system? So they are not enrolled in any way in uh, basic education. Is that... They are not. Uh, uh, because, uh, because when you are considered employed, your uh, your main job is work, not uh, not school. Because if your main job, uh, may not be, meaning most of your time is in schooling, you cannot be considered in, in the labor force. So that's, that's there. So the ones that are considered, like grade 10 here are grade 10 who went to the labor force. That they might have been doing like some little training or whatever, but that's not their main, their main uh, activity, economic activity is work. That's, that's the nature mm -hmm. of the description. Dr. Obeta, the, the yeah. slide is now flash on the screen, sir. Could you- like For example, uh, lovely, describe. one of the things that you're like, uh, I don't know if I can, see that this, this is the graph of like the first one is uh uh the first one is uh this one is the the first one to the right to the top is, is labor force so like for example one of the things you observe there is that uh if there is a there is a rise in the labor force participation of senior high school and the ones for the blue one which is for grade 10 is flat so it, it, it doesn't change much so the proportion of them going into the labor market doesn't change much but there is a rising uh rising uh, proportion of senior high school graduates going into the labor force as the first that's what how you look at it so i don't know what kind of questions so basically this graph tells you what happened throughout the eight quarters that uh, that was analyzed and of course uh, you just maybe you can uh you can drop the last quarter because that's already going into the pandemic, which is in April uh, 2020. So it starts with uh, uh, July 2018 up to uh, April 2020. That's, that's, that's the, so like, uh, so unemployment rate go, is going up uh, uh, towards up to the time it was, there was a pandemic. And then the next slide uh, will tell you the, the average wage, average wage, for instance, the one of the things that you can observe here is there's a very high pay for second year college uh, compared and and the uh, and the uh, and the uh, grade ten and grade twelve are about the same. Um, although, but by comparing by 
controlling for the characteristics, we see that the senior high school have, uh, uh, I think, 20, 20 pesos uh, uh, more income per day compared to grade 10. So that's 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 what's the result. So uh, uh, so that that's that's the that's the you know now I don't know what 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 specifically were you asking in terms of oh. yeah yeah because I was just curious for for the previous slide for example can so it, oh, for quarters um yeah for quarter three of 2018 q1 mm. of 2019 um can is is am I reading the chart right that um senior high school have higher underemployment compared to college second year college yes yes yeah the red one so I see so yeah. they want more 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 jobs okay okay yeah. um yeah because because I was I was I, I'm the reason why I'm asking that is I was wondering if we we can surmise from the data if there's kind of like um, credential inflation. So, you know, people are maybe overqualified for the over credentialed for the type of work that they are doing. Um, but it seems like the data suggests otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. You. Thank you. Perhaps we can now go to um our um the questions of our participants. And this one is for you, love. Uh, Edi Basiliote, uh, <laughs> let me go back to the question of uh, Teodoro, uh, uh, Mr. Teodoro Dulay. So in relation to your discussion, uh, he said, has there been work done on reconciling the competencies that the students possess with the needs of the industry? Um, he added that the scale of such a study would be quite large, but perhaps something has been done reconciling the, the written um, competencies uh, in one of your projects, maybe. So um, I, I actually replied to him also in the chat, like, I mean, not, not that, none that I know of, except for um, what Director Andaya was mentioning about um, a comparison of, you know, the written um, curriculum, mm. the, the, the delivered curriculum, and then, um, but so, but that's on the supply side. I'm not sure about, because uh, on the demand side, meaning industry need requirements, we're also doing kind of like a mapping of what they what they are looking for. But bridging those two together, I'm not super aware of of um, any efforts, but at a large scale, what we did in PBED was we identified a subsector. Mm -hmm. um, so that's co um, contact center industry. We we got um, the the companies to come together, identify their competencies, and then work with the DepEd to do some sort of matching. Um, but but I think not to the scale that uh, Mr. Dulai was 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 asking for. Also, okay. um, the requirements of industry change all the time. All the time. So there is also the challenge, right, of like, you might be reconciling them for this point in time, but then it might change like in the next two years. So there has to be, if ever there's any effort to, to reconcile should allow for these changes, um, should have enough flexibility so that um, um, it, 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 has, it has room for, for change um, should, should the industry's needs change as well. Okay, thank you very much for uh, your response, um, Director Love. No, Edib uh, Lambasiliote. Now, uh, we have a question here, and perhaps I can throw this to Director Andaya from Adrian Lucido. You may have data on this from your uh, tracer study. He, he is, uh, she is asking about if, if you have data on the employment or the um, perhaps the sector uh, where senior high high school graduates are employed. Do you have data on this? Is it in agri, in service, in the services sector uh, or in yeah. the industry? Yeah, uh, no, uh, unfortunately, we have not been able to uh, have that kind of disaggregation, only uh, the data on where they went or where they are now. So they just say they are employed and, and you know, but no, no disaggregation as regards the hospital tourism and hospitality business in the uh, uh, automotive business and the like. No, we don't. We don't have that yet. And uh, I think that that uh, in the next tracer that we'll be conducting, three years after we conducted the first one, then we'll be able to have those kinds and other 
other uh, uh, was this data that we will be needing in order to uh, enhance the curriculum, which, by the way, will be able to do uh, sometime in 2022. Okay. Our school, yes. Okay. And uh, would you have um, um, any information or, or data uh, comparing the labor force participation of the cohort studied uh, across different countries? No, no, unfortunately, we don't have that too. Mm -hmm. um, how about uh, PBED? Um, would you have anything to, to contribute, anything to share? regarding this question. Perhaps I can also ask Dr. Orbeta because he's studying um, deeply into, you know, studying the literature and unrelated studies uh, on senior Sorry, what, 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 what aspect of the, could you repeat the question? Yes, I think the labor force participation of our um, uh, senior high school um, graduates across different countries. Mm, well, um, I, so we we do look at different countries, but I know that um you it will be it's better to compare comparable countries, right? But mm, um, unfortunately, yes. the data that we have um are data from the U.S., so um uh not comparable at all. But yes. what we are seeing in in their in their and actually I think this was one of the findings of the tracer study that the 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 labor force participation of of the youth depends not just on their on individual um, and personal circumstances, but also external factors. So in, in the States, for example, they are seeing growth in higher ed uh, participation. It's because of, you know, the bills that are laws that were, were passed. So the GI Bill, um, <laughs> excuse me, like making community colleges free, etc. Um, but in terms of wage differential, there there's not much uh there there's now like growing inequality between um college degree holders and and k-12 graduates and so people are kind of like discouraged from going to 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 work after k-12 because there's that huge um uh, wage differential uh i'm not sure though if we're that at that level yet here in the philippines it's very much Parang perception lang that okay, I, 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 if I want to get a, a good job, I, I want to go to college. So um, I think it, it's a, an interesting point of, of research. Um, and perhaps, yeah, Dr. Beta's team can, can look into it. Because yes. what are the, the factors that, in, that, um, that influence decision making, right? Parang, I actually had a question also on the difference in income. Parang the difference in income between the the uh, grade 10 and grade 12 is only 20 pesos per day but if you look at it from the perspective of the poor 20 pesos is a lot of money right and then every day pa siya, so mm -hmm. how much yon per month so um mm -hmm. parang making i mean having also an understanding of the effect effect size of such differential mm -hmm. uh, i think would help but anyway um talking too much as a researcher now but but <laughs> um, it would be i think it would be an interesting topic to to look at um because and then maybe not just the us but like um com more comparable countries more comparable uh, countries oh um dr arbeta is this topic um in your radar um like you know something that you are considering to pursue in the future um, yeah in the list yeah in but, the list. but I'm just, <laughs> But I'm trying to uh, just me try to ex uh, actually if you look at the full paper, the one the uh, second paper, figure one and figure two has a comparison of the labor force participation of 15 to 24. Not uh, so that's the age group and and what the country is one of the lowest uh, uh, in terms of and because uh, uh, if, if if you put side by side with the enrollment rate, you are also one of the highest enrollment rates uh for uh, for uh, upper secondary so that that's that that's the uh, uh explanation right there so i figure one and figure two of the table of that if you care to look at the paper mm -hmm. uh says that that that's this uh the labor force participation rate in the philippines is, is the is lowest compared like to countries like malaysia vietnam our neighbors indonesia mm -hmm. and thailand Okay. Uh, using uh, 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 World Bank data across three years from 2000 to 2000, 2000 to 2018, 19. Yeah. 
yeah mm -hmm. so that's 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 so that's uh uh I, I th that has always been the, the i think uh I have papers before trying to understand the the choice of 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 uh going to uh going to school uh, but that that's for basic so essentially that's the and 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 and, and income is really a very big factor but in the Philippines, uh, ever since we have been showing very high school attendance rates uh, uh, for our income, so that's that's the nature of the Philippine society. Uh, our school attendance rates are very high, uh, are uh, approaching uh, develop develop country levels uh, mm -hmm. uh, for our given income. So that's 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 the, that's why our labor force participation is very low as well. So kasi magano yon mag 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 uh, mag substitution yon eh mag the trade off ka if you are go to work or go to school and most our youngsters go to school rather than go to work so that's 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 and we have to if you as i said are we happy with 20 percent? so that's that's basically what where we are uh and uh most of our neighbors are have very much higher uh labor force participation rate uh, for this age group uh, in junior high school that's that that's that's the philippines uh, i don't know how you make of that but that has been going on for several years now thank you dr Arbeta. actually our participants uh, you, you can download the full um study from our uh website the the two studies presented by dr Arbeta, and we will show you the link later on i will you can also um email us if, if you need a copy of uh, copies of those papers okay let us entertain some more questions Actually, I have I have a question which is um, uh, related to the to the pandemic because as, as we all know the pandemic has 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 drawn attention to to specific skills that our for, workforce uh, needs to thrive in the new normal things like um, let's say creativity collaboration no, adaptability and I'd like to ask the depth and how is uh, you know the department how does it ensure that you know this uh you know specific skills soft skills are are um part of you know part of the curriculum so that you come up really with a with a a um a workforce that's really you know uh suitable um or uh, prepared to uh take take on the demands of you know the of um what we call as the the new normal director andaya yeah, um, one of the challenges really during this pandemic is not just delivering a, a quality education, but also um, ensuring that our senior high school learners are actually afforded uh, opportunities for work immersion and hands-on training. Uh, and that's why one of the uh, important uh, uh policies that we were able to release was actually the most essential learning competencies where we just uh, looked into what really are the essential skills that need to to be uh, uh introduced to our learners during this pandemic uh we have that for all learning areas and for work mm -hmm. immersion we have ensured that um our learners also are, are guided and even our teachers are guided by releasing the work immersion during crisis situation. Uh, for hands-on training, what we did was actually to pattern uh, the uh, how we do it uh, with TESDA. Okay. In other words, what we offered were those that are available at home or can be done uh, at home. Like for instance, carpentry, uh, all computer uh, related specializations, of course, were offered. And um, for home economics, those that are uh, and can be done at home under the supervision, of course, of the teacher through online uh, platform. But at the same time, also, there were modules that were given, but that's not as effective as, of course, uh, the online instruction where the teachers can really see what the students are doing, even if they only have limited resources. What we did also for our joint delivery voucher program was for our TVI partners to deliver packages to the houses of learners so that they have the necessary tools that they can use as they uh, do the, the 
skills training in their respective homes. I was told, but I have not seen this actually. There were companies that did work immersion uh, online, uh, but we have yet to to monitor that, and we have yet to make a report on that. Okay, thank, thank you, you very, much. thank you, and thank you, uh, uh, Director Andaya. Uh, one of the earlier questions that we received pro was uh, from Aris Eroles, and he is asking if there is if there is a distinction between a um, senior high school graduate from a private school vis-a-vis -vis from that of a public school. Do we have any data on this, uh, um, Director? May I be clarified on the question? What do you mean by distinction between public? Um, and perhaps in terms of um, quality, quality of graduates or competencies. I am well, just, we have... I'm just trying, trying to interpret uh, Mr. Aris yeah. Rollis' uh, question. Um, in terms of uh, the K-12 program, everyone is expected to follow the K-12. So I don't see the distinction between uh, public and private. But as regards uh, where they went after graduating from senior high school, we have not uh gone into that yet so there's no tracer study as regards uh but i would surmise that majority of uh the students from the private schools went to universities and colleges okay and we have a um a related question from uh mr professor emeritus george marcel of the ppci pcci he wanted to know the accept uh, acceptance rate of k-12 graduates uh, from private schools versus those from public schools. Uh, do we have any data on this, um, Director Joyce? No, no, we, do, we don't have that data. In fact, in the tracer study we have conducted, it's purely uh, for our public school students. And that's something that we will look into as we uh, do the plan, draft mm -hmm. the plan for our uh, senior high school enhancement, uh, program enhancement. Okay, we are down to our final question. So let me just, uh, some of the questions that are remaining in our chat box have already been answered by our uh, speakers. Um, okay, uh, perhaps we can, you can uh, answer this, uh, Director Joyce, because this was sent to me several times, I think. Okay, it's, it's about, um, uh, Wait, where is that? Uh, he, he, she mentioned about overhauling our uh, um, the curriculum. Uh, okay, uh, for the BPO industry and overseas co uh, contract work, working shop positions demands in the midst of the pandemic, uh, that should consider overhauling the curriculum, not just the senior high school, but also junior high school and primary levels, like expanding the special program in foreign language. To primary level and make it a core compulsory subject starting grade one. I think this is just a, a suggestion from um, from uh, uh, Joseph Solis Al Qaeda Al Baritsi. So as you've mentioned already, um, the DepEd has been uh, you know um, conducting uh, um, intensive efforts to really uh, make the curriculum timely and relevant. Um, yeah, I just would like to add. To Yes, uh, the suggestion is well taken, but I just would like to inform everyone present in this uh, public webinar that uh, we have started the, in the review of the K-10 curriculum, actually. Okay. And uh, since 2019, if I'm not mistaken, and we are now in the process of revising the curriculum, again, ensuring uh, wide participation from uh, several stakeholders especially from the academe who are our academic ex who, are, who we deem as academic experts and of course inviting our uh, stakeholders from from the private sector so yes uh, we're looking into this already and we hope that by early 2022 we'll be able to finish our uh, k-3 at, at the least uh, k-3 curriculum yes uh, but of course as i said uh, Depends on, we can't just simply overhaul, we need to have hard data or, um, or there's a science to the review and ensuring that uh, we really address uh, the needs uh, of our learners and of, of, of society. 
Thank you, Director Choice. Well, just to cap our discussion, may I request our speakers for some final words, uh, starting from Dr. Orbeta, then uh, E.D. Lovely Basilote, and of course, uh, Director Andaya. Um, Dr. Orbeta, final words? Yeah, I'm just very happy to to learn about the developments that uh, uh, Director Choice has shared and even the tracer study that they're continuing to do. That's, that's very important. I think the interaction with the private sector is also very important in this case wherein uh, we are uh, uh, we have to acquaint uh, private sector about what the senior high school can do. And I think that has been uh, 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 very uh, uh, emphasized by by the interaction with private sector and involving them even in curriculum changes and 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 responding to the the claim more for longer uh, uh, work immersions are very welcome. Uh, we 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 are very happy that the uh, that our analysis uh, has has been uh, uh, an input and 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 thank you for. Uh, uh, uh realizing also all this and then hope we the the interaction with the private sector will be will continue because uh as I, this is a this is not a one-time issue it, it will take take some time before everyone can adjust to the to the presence of the additional two years of of of, of high school uh uh and and and, and how they will so our, even our, our last recommendations we continue to monitor this so that uh, we see if there are improvements in the match of uh, graduates as well as who are who wanting who wants to work, and and, and the jobs there and and uh, uh, the jobs that they are getting in the labor market and and this study is, is starting to give some uh, hard evidence on on this and, and we are happy to be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Arbeta. Um, Edi, lovely Basilote, maybe maybe here. Yes, um, thank Final words yeah. from you. Okay. Um. Yeah, I just want to thank BIDS for this, and especially um Dr. Arbeta's team, um for doing this study and for sharing good evidence. I think um when it comes to looking at um education investments and how they translate to labor market outcomes, um very important for us advocates to look at the evidence and and really also make sure that you know we our recommendations really do match what's what's out there and what what um what the reality is on the ground um very excited to participate in any continuing work um on this matter and and we hope that we actually really continue these efforts because um at the end of the day you know it's not about us the researchers or our our um, organizations but it's really about the youth and how we can better prepare them for the world of work or the world in general and and how we can um, make sure that to a certain extent their transition is not um, as rough as uh, a time as we are having right now in this pandemic um uh, just as a last point um um, because of the news of the passing of former President um, um, Benigno Aquino um, III, um, who, under whose term the K-12 law was actually passed. Um, I just want to give um, honor and tribute to our former president. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, E.D. Lovelyn Basilote. And uh, of course, last but not the least, uh, Director Joyce Sendaya. Uh, Michelle, can my uh, video be turned on? Kahit naman lang sa huling ano. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Of there? course. Sure, ma'am. Um, I can turn it on. Can you turn it on, on please? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wala. Anyway. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Pete. Director Joyce, uh, you can turn, please turn on your video. I, I can't. It's it's stuck. <laughs> okay. And, yeah, it's all right. Uh, I just would like to say thank you to uh, PIDS and, of course, the team of uh, Dr. Orbeta. Thank you for um, uh, this particular um, studies. These are very helpful to us, especially in the Bureau of Curriculum Development. As we uh, reshape the curriculum 
Okay, and as we look for ways to further enhance our senior high school program, we're also very grateful to the support that uh, the overwhelming support of, of uh, several sectors in, in, in the department, I mean, in, in private sector and even in the, the different government agencies. Uh, they say that education is everybody's business. Uh, and therefore, if it is everybody's business, it involves the participation of everyone. For if education outcomes are met, of course, our society, not just our economy, our society progresses. And on that note, I'd like to again uh, say that um, uh, it's not just DepEd alone doing this. It's not just uh, DepEd's business. It's everybody's business. Education is everybody's business. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Director Jocelyn Andaya. Very fitting final words. And so, friends, uh, at this point, uh, please join me in thanking our speakers, uh, Dr. Aniseto Orbeta, Director Jocelyn Andaya of DepEd, and Executive Director Lovely Basiliotti of PDED, Philippine Business for Education for the Valuable Information and insights that they have shared with us this afternoon. Let us give all of them a big virtual clap. And thank you to all our participants for uh, sharing your insights for the comments that we receive, and of course, uh, for, for, for the your very stimulating questions. Okay. Um, friends, at this point, uh, I'd like to announce the winners of our draw for uh, our webinar for this week. Uh, Jenmar Baja, Lawrence Guido, and uh, Teresita Felipe. Uh, Jenmar Baja, Lawrence Guido, and Teresita Felipe, you won in our draw. Um, and our webinar team will um, get in touch with you for your price. Okay, so friends, we hope that our discussion uh, today has brought greater awareness and understanding of our uh, senior high school program. The not just the senior high school program, but of course, um, you know, K to twelve and other related um, and the issues confronting it and, and ways to enhance. Um, um, education outcomes and we also hope that this webinar will further motivate the various actors and, and stakeholders in our uh, education and labor sectors to continue working together as what our um, um, speakers have emphasized um, education is everybody's uh, business education issues are um, uh, could be the concern of everyone so and it requires a uh, it's, it's a multi-sectoral issue which require uh, uh, mul which requires multi-sectoral solutions. Okay, and finally we have uh, some reminders before we finally close. Okay, um, flash on the screen um, are the links to the full studies of Dr. Obeta as well as the infographic that we produced uh, two years ago uh, on his uh, 2018 study. So you can download all of them from our website. Okay, and um, please also um, answer the feedback uh, survey that, that will flash on the screen after this. Our Your comments are very important to us to um, serve you better. And of course, uh, please continue to follow us on our uh, um, social media pages. Thank you to all our Facebook viewers and to all those who um, tune in to our Twitter page for the live stream of this event and continue um, visiting, regularly visiting our website for um, updates on our knowledge products and services. And for the month of July, we have the following webinars. Okay, on July 8, uh, we have our webinar on the challenges and prospects of the Philippine electric vehicle industry. On in July 22, we will have uh, Dr. Orbeta once again uh, for his study on the profile of training and skilling programs in the Philippines. And I've just received an email uh, this morning that I think Pibed is, will also be a presenter in this uh, webinar, Dr. Orbeta. Uh, they will be, uh, you know, sharing their study on the NEET. No? Um, so, yeah. Um, this will be a, uh, another uh, interesting, uh, we will have another interesting discussion on July 22 and, of course, on July 8. That's okay. Study, that's a yes, study yes. done with PBED. Yes, 
the study you've done with PIBED? Uh, your study, right? The uh, training and skilling uh, programs yeah, in the Philippines is study uh, done by PIBED. PIBED, yeah. Wait. PIBED is a valued partner of, of PIDS. Okay. And finally, we would like to thank all the representatives from uh, the private, from the government, uh, private sector, academe, uh, civil society, and of course the media for joining us today. And we hope to see you again in our uh, webinars uh, in in um, in July as well as uh, in, in in the coming months. So, friends, this concludes our virtual event for this week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay informed too. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Maraming salamat po.